Hello, you're watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Outsource Facebook workers face exploitation in Kenya. United Nations warn millions in Yemen facing death sentence. Palestinian activist Kitam Safin sentenced to prison. And former Honduran president attends United States extradition hearing. In our first story, an investigation by The Time has revealed exploitative conditions at Facebook linked office in Kenya. The report focuses on nearly 200 people working for California based outsourcing company Sama. Describing itself as ethical AI, Sama has secured contracts with Google, Microsoft, and Walmart. Its office in Nairobi provides content moderation for Facebook for Sub Saharan Africa. Time has found that workers at this facility are being paid as low as $1.5 an hour. These outsourced workers speak at least 11 languages and are responsible for reviewing illegal or banned content from Facebook. According to Time, they have a de facto daily quota of screening 580 items, a lot of which can be extremely graphic and violent. The investigation has revealed a workplace culture of mental trauma and intimidation. Workers have described the conditions as mental torture, modern slavery, and neo-colonialism. Moderators also said that they were only told about the true nature of the job after they had signed a non-disclosure agreement. At least two people resigned after they were diagnosed with PTSD, anxiety, and depression. Others said they were unable to afford access to proper care and continue to work despite trauma. In 2019, workers threatened to strike unless their working conditions improved. Within weeks, the strike leader Daniel Mutong, who was also in the process of filing trade union papers, was fired. The investigation has echoed criticisms that Facebook is exporting trauma to exploited workers in the global south. In our next story, the United Nations has renewed its aid appeal for Yemen, saying that the millions in the country are facing, quote-unquote, a death sentence. Humanitarian chief Martin Griffiths has stated that nearly two-thirds of aid programs were already scaled back or closed in January. Special envoys Hans Grundberg has also pointed to an alarming increase in air raids, including in residential areas in Sana'a and Houthi-controlled Hodeida port area. United Nations figures indicate that over 650 civilians were killed or injured in January alone. This is by far the highest toll in three years. In 2021, the United Nations only received $2.2 billion out of its $3.8 billion funding requirement. In December, the World Food Programme was forced to reduce food rations for 8 million people. Griffiths has said that these people may receive reduced or no rations at all in March. Lack of funds could also deprive 3.6 million people of safe drinking water and impact health and other initiatives. 80% of Yemen's population is currently reliant on aid. Combat zones in the country have multiplied and the United States has pledged and provided support to the Saudi Emirati coalition. Israel is reportedly also lobbying the Biden administration on behalf of the UAE to redesignate the Houthis as a terrorist group. Rights groups have repeatedly warned that the designation and accompanying sanctions will only make the crisis worse. In our next story, Palestinian activist Khitam Saafin has been sentenced to 16 months in prison. Rights group Adamir has said that the ruling was issued by Israel's Ofer military court. Saafin has been held under arbitrary detention since her arrest in November 2020. She was first placed in arbitrary custody without charge or trial for eight months. Israeli prosecutors submitted an indictment against her in June 2021 containing a list of inflated charges. They alleged that Safin held responsibility for joint administration with the six Palestinian organizations recently outlawed by Israel. Among them, is a Union of Palestinian Women's Committees, or UPWC, of which Sa'afin has been president. She was also accused of money laundering between these groups and the Popular Front for Liberation of Palestine. Adamir 
argues that this represents the practice of applying Israeli military orders retroactively to target activists. After being denied access to the secret material against Sahafin, her counsel was forced to directly engage with the prosecutor. An agreement was reached to limit the charges to Sahafin's alleged membership in the PFLP and her position in the UPWC. Israeli military courts are not bound by due process considerations and the jurisdiction itself is a breach of international standards. The criminalization of membership or affiliation to a political party is also a violation of these principles. And finally, former Honduran president Juan Orlando Hernandez appeared at his first extradition hearing on February 16th. The US filed an extradition request in the Honduran Supreme Court of Justice earlier this week. The request was granted on February 15th and Hernandez was arrested from his residence in Tegucigalpa. He is reportedly facing charges related to drug trafficking into the US and the use and carry of firearms. The Supreme Court has announced that the hearing for the presentation of evidence will take place on March 16th. Hernandez has been detained at the Cobra Special Forces base in the capital. A member of the right-wing National Party, he served as president from January 2014 to 2022. The National Party itself has been in power since 2009 after a US-backed coup ousted progressive president Manuel Zelaya. Hernandez remained a close ally of the United States and a major advocate of its interests in the region. His name came up during the trial of his younger brother, Juan Antonio, in relation to cocaine trafficking. The case had sparked mass protests in Honduras with the slogan, Get Out JOH Narco Dictator. The former president was subsequently named as a co-conspirator by a U.S. prosecutor. Evidence indicates that Hernandez received $1.5 million in bribes from drug traffickers and used it to finance his election campaigns. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching.